The winter sun was going down on surface paradise. It was my 98th day on the wagon. It didn't feel any better than my 97th. I miss my hip flask of Johnny Walker, my ex-wife Jean, my pet dog Samari, and my exorbitant salary as deputy commissioner of police. I wasn't sure anymore I was cut out to be a writer of controversial exposés of police corruption. At the moment, I couldn't lift the lid off a can of baked beans. I wanted to be 12 years old again, or the best spin bowler in Southport High. I wanted a lot of things. Mr. Stacy. So did my landlady, including the rent. Don't tell me you had your hair cut. Permed. There's been a bloke ringing STD all day. He left this message for you. Oh, yes, it's from a friend of mine, my publisher. Samari's been eating him out of house and home. The publisher's looking after you, Doc. Well, they're a desperate breed of men. Five more bills came for you, and two final notices. I put them under your door. Thank you. Why don't we have an affair? Well, I'm still a free man. Not while your room's in that condition. Oh, well, that's the sticking point. I made my way into the familiar squalor, wondering how I, Michael Stacy, OBE of Army and Police Intelligence, one-time friend of cabinet ministers and brothel keepers and gambling millionaires, had come down so far in the world so fast. It was to do in part, I knew, with being framed in the Royal Commission, but maybe it went deeper than that. Maybe I had a suicidal streak, one that got worse when sober. I was thankful at least for the weekly postcard from my old mate Quiney in Malaya, on which was the latest move in our absorbing game of chess. The game now in its seventh month was beginning to look interesting. Then I wrote some more of my forthcoming best seller that exposed them all, the bastards. Wished I was writing it better. And then real life intruded. I was getting to like it less and less. Michael Stacy, OB, New Year's Honors, 1976. Hello, Michael. Jock! <laughs> You gotta be joking. No, I'm not joking. I've done 980 closely typed pages, all beautiful, gripping stuff. I'm sorry, old boy, it's too late. But too late! Ah, that's right, it's too late. Look, that's not the reason. You know bloody well that's not the reason. You're on the piss again, eh? You've been hitting the turps. I haven't touched a drop in six months. Well, all right, three months. Look, John, give me another week, huh? Sorry, mate. Well, four days. I'm sending your useless dog back. Now keep the dog, it's a gift. Fell in love, the stars above came down to play. And now, as I wonder, my thoughts ever stray. Save your brain, Stacey. Plenty more hangovers where this one came down from. Mexico you reckon? Way. <laughs> 
I've seen you before, Stace. You put on a suicidal front, but at bottom you're still an Irish Catholic and you don't believe in it. Well, I'm just getting into training for purgatory. That's all. It could be a valuable experience for this growing lad. Stacy. Draw me another one. Some hundreds of years before tonight, by a coincidence that didn't surprise either her or me, I'd been almost engaged to Kate back when the world was young. Here she was again, lads, two whole marriages later, hers and mine, moving slowly closer to the center of my life. I knew she was there, but I drew back from going to her and putting my head in her bosom and crying like a baby. We old soldiers have some pride. The Irish mistress wasn't helping my appreciation of the music or the decor. The crooner sounded like two old cheese graters fornicating in an iron tank. And the wallpaper was beginning to look hostile. Down in Mexico Hi, Stace. As she sighed, as she whispered, Manana. Never dreaming that we were parting. As I lied and I whispered, Manana. For tomorrow never came. Blaze! South of the border. <laughs> hey, how are you? Oh, I'm, I'm all right. Christ, you look rotten, Mark. Bloody awful. You should see me on my bad days. Yeah, we can leave this for some other time, eh? Our mate is union business trades, all you know how it is. Yes, yes, yes. I'm in the book. Uh, Ted Godfrey? That's Ted Godfrey. He's not trades hall anymore, is he? Well, that's one rule. South of the border. Back up all my kids. Here I go, singing loud. Bye, bye. Where somebody waits for me, sugar sweet, so is she. with the Samoan rugby team, offered to teach them native dancing. Desperate men. Mm. I lost another fourth to the Salvation Army. Trombone. Mm -mm. Sense of sin. Well, I was like the regular army. They were big on the sense of sin. I was in the regular army. Army in total. Eight years. You're a white man. Give me $20 and I'll buy you a drink. How could I refuse? Top secret. Haven't I heard of him? Tom? Oh, yeah. I'm in my lady. Army intelligence. Let me 20 gold. If I make it 50, will you ask me less often? Constantino Cagapolis. Candos. You know? 
you're a good guy. I wish, I really, dearly wish that every other child was as good straight and honest as you. We are an ancient and proud people. Yep. The army's in town. Why don't you go and try them? I have, and I don't like them. I know you. I work for Senator McCready. You saw him last night. Remember? Yeah, I remember. He wants to see you. Does he now? I had a mouth like an Ayatollah's armpit and a pressing need for a drink. I could have argued, but frankly, I was curious. We went upriver from the Isle of Capri, past bungalow after bungalow of rich men, waiting for the eternal boatman on their summer lawns, avoided the Rialto, turned right at Sorrento, and went on past the portals of Orion into Shangri-La estate. Les McCready had come up in the world from when I knew him first to class below me in South Port High, where he fielded like a stud mullet at leg slip. Storman and Packer, law graduate, local alderman, Queen's Council, federal senator, and cabinet minister, and I tipped to be premier of the emerging seventh state. And it'd be nice to say he hadn't changed a bit, but he had. A lot of it was the Labour Party caucus. You couldn't blame him for that. And part of it was his new wife, a social climbing air hostess with designs on Buckingham Palace. I wondered if the unflappable Keith stood by her bed in the middle of the night, the way he did mine, and asked if anything further was needed, Mullum. She looked ten years younger since her hysterectomy, and mean as a beach full of blue bottles. Good morning, Mike. Is the day so young? It's lovely to see you. How long has it been? Oh, the wedding uh, breakfast, I think, when I sang the good ship Venus in the matter of Perry Como, all 48 verses, with local references. Yes, I remember. Les is inside on the phone. Washington, I think. Your old stamping ground, huh? The international set. Some of us make it, some of us don't. Some of us know when to stop. Not you, darling. This way, Mr. Deputy Commissioner. Thank you. Well, I can't say it's been a pleasure. I'll call you back sometime in the next administration. Ha! <laughs> Mike. Where is? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about last night. It's a uh, trades hall, the Labour Party, my pre selection. What can I say? Well, you certainly. Well, look, Mike, they've got me on the hook. 
And there's a difference, as you may have heard, between number two on the Senate ticket and number three. Yes, I have heard. If they can dredge you one more thing against me, Mike, I'm gonna mill him. One more? Now, this is well, delicate, but I want you to find my daughter. She came back three months ago, knocked off by Drysdale, $30,000 worth, and I don't know where she is. Oh, it's all to do with my, my marrying Joan and divorcing Alma. And Alma dying. Dying the way she did. She's got it in for me. Man for modern society and all that. For good reasons. No, they do it, Mike. $5,000 to find her and bring her back as a favor from an old friend to an old friend. I'm writing a book. Oh, no, you're not. I know. The book's off. Oh, really? Now, leave it that way, old mate. Really? Why, Les? Because you're sticking your neck out too bloody far and you know it. Oh, look, Stace. I trust you. I want you to find Kathy. Well, I suppose I'm still a godfather. You are. We got drunk together, remember, at a christening? $4,000. Sure. Plus expenses. This is the only photograph you got? Yeah. She took the family album last time she came back. Didn't want a father to have it. Felt he'd let down the side. Hair of the dog? I'm on duty. What do you think? I think she hates Mrs. McCready so much she'll come back after her. Make a big scene. Something really melodramatic. She on anything? I don't think so. She doesn't believe in it. Very pure. She on with anybody? Oh, yeah. I'd say so. Had a guess. Well informed. Guess. Babysitting isn't what it was. It all felt pretty simple at the start to find an old friend's daughter for $4,000 plus expenses. It wasn't exactly a new lease of life now the book was over, but it would keep me going until opening time. The first place I called at in search of the missing Drysdale was the usual kind of Gold Coast art gallery with a difference. It was run by a mildly shady character I knew of old famed for his fashionable forgeries and development deals. Hello, Clyde. Ah, police commissioner. Did a blast-looking blonde young girl come in here with a forged Drysdale, which obviously you didn't buy? <sighs> blast. And it was stolen. What are you talking about? Well, something that the dealers association might find a little shonky, you know? It's not the first time. And what do you want, oh, former Deputy Commissioner? A cut. It's the girl I want, not the Drysdale. It's no forgery. He's astigmatic, you know. The world looks just like that to him. How did she convince you that it was hers to sell? Had a letter from her father, the minister. Yeah, but she could have forged that signature. Maybe. But then I thought Les wouldn't prosecute his own daughter anyway. Bargain, was it? Steel, you might say. She had me make out the check in that name. Thanks, Clyde. <clears throat> Two quick phone calls led me to an address I was familiar with. Full of animals I really liked and people I could take or leave. Kathleen McCready, a lovely name. Is she in trouble? No, her father's just anxious to find her, that's all. Well, we met at this, uh, be frank, wild party. Over the border. She was really amazing. We really exploded together. And you said, what are you doing after the orgy? Pardon? I do not know. Okay. Pass the visor. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we lived together for about, oh, I don't know, ten days. It was my best ten days. Four times a night. What? Four times a night. For four? She was really warm, loving, breakfast in bed, all the grass I could smoke. I mean, Peruvian gold. And what did you do with the money? What do you mean? With the painting. Look, I got nothing to hide. Mm -hmm. 
All I did was bank the check for her the next day, drew out a whole $12,000 with a rubber band around it, and I gave it to her. Really was a bargain. That afternoon, she bought me a Ducati 860 GT motorbike. That's Sonia. Lovely girl. It's all silicone. Not the same. I know. And we had this mad weekend riding all over the coast. Then we were in this motel in Mwollomba. And when I woke up the next morning, she was gone. You never saw her again? No, I saw her a week later. She was talking to the bouncer at the Borsalino. I went up to her and I said, hey, what happened to you? Uh -huh. And she said, go away, I don't want to think about any of that. And I said, well, I really want to thank you for the motorbike. And Igor, that was the bouncer, threw me down the stairs. How'd you know his name was Igor? He's a close personal friend of mine. Hello, Igor. Nice place. I prefer Beethoven. Do you? Yeah. I'm a Mozart man myself. No kidding. What's the bottom line? Kathleen McCready. I'm a policeman. No kidding. Yeah, she's a little nut. Wild eyes, nice bum. Rugs? No, she's just a little nut. She's an initiate at the Temple of Expanded Awareness now. How long was she with you? Four days. I liked her. But then I thought, a nun or a whore, you know? I mean, I'm a pragmatic realist. I'm into real estate. I've got no time for little cripples. Yeah, I get the drift. I thought you were a poofter. The suit. Nobody but a puff to wear the suit. I personally know thousands. Put them all under arrest. The temple's on shore drive in the broad border. Great position. Did you bring a piece of fruit? And, uh, please make your selection. Oh, haha, <laughs> this. Um, that will be 50 cents, please. All our fruit is 50 cents. Should have chosen a pineapple. We have no pineapples. You mean, yes, we have no pineapples. Pardon? Don't worry about it, it's an old game. My name is Crystal Mountain. Please follow me. All the way. To know is to share. No is to share. Five blind men were shown an elephant in a darkened room. And the five blind men were asked to describe the elephant. One, feeling its trunk, said an elephant is like a snake. One, Would you care to take your shoes off, sir? What? An elephant the, um... is like a brush. No, thanks, no. One, what do you wish? Its leg, it said an elephant is like a tree. One, feeling its tusk, said an elephant is like a firm banana. All were partly right, but all were wholly wrong. To know is to share. To know no. is to share. To see things wholly. And we are like blind men who do not. To see things whole is to see the whole world the way we see Would you step this way, sir? Not the way a no. blind man You can bring your shoes. Together. I'll never take my shoes off. Here they are. And what? Understand. Those are my shoes, brother. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, now we see as no, that's glass, cool. That's dark. cool. Go placidly. Face Your need is greater. But these are perfectly good shoes. Also, I am known. Perfectly good shoes. To know is to share. To know is to share. To see things. You forgot old. your banana. Not the way of life. Oh, gosh, so I did. Thank you. For now, we see in part and understand in part. To know is to share. Oh, friend. I have to ask why you won't take your shoes off. They're good shoes. And I also have to ask you, are you still affiliated with a branch or office of any police force or other similar investigative body? 
Then I have to warn you that this is Queensland, not California, and I can tell as many lies as I like. What about basic human rights? Well, they're in mothballs, you see, till human life evolves. What do you want? Kathy McCready, the senator's daughter, came here. Spatch McCready? Yeah, that's right. What happened to her? She was being pursued by a brutal young man, interested in making a real estate killing with her money. She sought sanctuary in our order. She may not have been sincere. Why, weren't you able to relieve her of the burden of her excessive wealth? <laughs> Don't provoke us, Mr. Stacy. As part of our physical discipline, we all learn kendo. What happened to her? Our policy is after a month to send our communicants back into the world, what is laughingly called the real world, to test their concept of ultimate reality before returning for ordination. She didn't return. One of our initiates saw a photograph in a guide to an escort agency. He tried to make contact, but in vain. She was rather a disappointment to us. Why do you like to keep it in the family, do you? Hmm? Sorry, I have this vulgar streak. Yes, you do. What? It was places like this that were giving God and Buddha a bad name. I tried to see Cathy McCready, a respectable upper-class Labour senator's daughter in such a setting, but found it all too easy. She and her generation were trying it all. Bean shoots and ashrams, hard drugs and primal screaming, the road to Kathmandu, and two weeks as a whore in another town. They were all getting back at the parents who had given them the world. They wanted revenge. Revenge was in the air in surface paradise that morning. My old mate Curly wanted some of it too. Getting desperate, are you? Definitely not. She's a nice girl. I think we got some of them performing at the New Stages Convention. Jumping yeah. out of cakes, that sort of thing. Want an introduction? I'm on the wagon taking up religion. Here, have a banana split or something. I got the makings. Uh, no, I'm on a job. Mm -hmm. Gee, remember your Jolson imitation? Yeah. You ain't heard nothing yet. I was a popular figure at the policeman's ball. You were, you really were. All yeah, right. Mike? No? How's the uh, writing game? Should have. You see, I got these pressing deadlines. Mike, we're old friends. Mm. No evidence of it in inquiry. I'd be very disappointed if there was anything in that book that might make my son think any less of me. He's got his Bachelor of Law now. Mm -hmm. A lot of the blokes in the special section feel the same way. A premonition of disappointment, eh? Don't bullshit, Mike. What's in it? Why don't you buy it? Get your wife to explain a bit words. I heard the publisher didn't want it. Well, did you? Other publishers, you know. New York, England. All right. You've been warned. Enjoy your ice cream, Mike. Cram in all the pleasure you can. Curly. My lawyer's got a list. If anything happens to me, people most likely to make it happen. And your name is on that list, but I might move it up, you know? You see, I can point the banana at you, old son, so be careful, huh? You used to be a pretty smart bloke. Pity you went on the piss and got all those grand ideas. You're not as smart as you used to be, mate. I'm disappointed in you too, Curly. Trouble, Stacy. Looking for an 18 year old girl. Who isn't? She's working as a hooker. Uh huh? Who isn't? She's the daughter of a worried old friend of mine, Liz McCready. What are you up to, Stacy? Oh, I'm just in between jobs, in between chapters of my life. You need a loan? A drink? Wrong side of a bed to get out of in the morning? Not just yet. Just got a few granny knots to tie up in my life. 
I don't know that I like you or want you, Stacy. And I'm sure I don't approve of you. But I'm here. Why don't you approve of me? Well, I don't approve of the army or the police, and I dislike closet socialists, and you're all three. Well, I didn't say it was perfect. Here. Did she come in here? Yeah. A while back, not lately. I think her trade name was Brandy Alexander. Brandy Alexander. That's good. <laughs> yeah. And she did a centerfold for Playboy, I think. Or she was going to. How do you know? An old friend of mine is a contributing editor. Oh, really? Does he like you in a cotton tail? He likes me in lots of costumes. Hmm. And I think I saw her stripping at the harem. That's all I know, Stace. Thanks. Well, I'll uh, <clears throat> see you in the morning, son. Or on the right side of the bed somewhere. Maybe. Would you tell him please to put on some speed? Follow my lead. Oh, how I need someone to watch over. Brandy Alexander. She was a senator's daughter, wasn't she? The haughty one. How do you know? <laughs> I got a heavy laid on me, didn't I? Did you? Uh, a couple of well-built gentlemen waiting in the dark when I came home one night. Burn the negative, Candos, the smaller one said, and live to draw the old age pension in Salonica. Did you? Well, most negatives look alike, don't they? And most burnt negatives of naked girls look even more alike. You know, you got a certain native cunning, which is surprising for a Chinaman. Thank you. Constantino. Michael. Who laid the heavy on you? Would you believe the whole Gold Coast Chamber of Commerce speaking in chorus? Not this week. Then don't ask. You want prints, not negatives? Yeah, I guess so. Do you enjoy taking these? Not that one. Very strange. How strange? Glassy, detached, above it all, slumming somehow. You know, most of these girls don't enjoy it. Fools don't know what they're missing out on. It's way down on their list of priorities, below cooking, listening to music, drinking Barossa Pearl. Talking with their mothers? Amazing. Yeah. Ah, sweet Rosie O'Grady, you've come a long, long way. Sure and beguiled. But when do I get the prints? Tomorrow morning. Any particular angle you prefer? Oh, no, not really. It's just something that looks nice on the uh, ceiling of the church. <laughs> this is 20th century economics I'm practicing. I'm marketing a product. You're late. I believe you. Get in there and take your clothes off. And one of the products I'm marketing might be at the new status convention tomorrow night, okay? Yeah, right. Deputy Commissioner. I thought it was you. You don't drink too much, Commissioner. Are you all right? Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I think so. I sometimes have these interruptions to my concentration and lose a few minutes. Yeah, well, you look to be green about the gills and you're moaning. Oh, oh. Could be something to do with the demon drink, you know. We'll take care, huh? Yeah. Can you go to jail? Would you like some of the Stacy, was it? No, Stacy. This is part of the multiple power generation unit. We should be able to supply with electricity and LPG gas a population of up to half a million and still have enough left over to sell to New South Wales. LPG? So where are you going to get your crude oil from? 50 miles offshore, out on the reef. It is one of the largest deposits in the world. It is a well-known rumor. 
Well, they're going to let you drill it. You don't have to when the new state comes through. Savaloy and tomato sauce? Thank you. What's that? A map. Map of what? The Gold Coast State, our new country. What's down there? Mount Warning, sir. The mountain warnings over the border? Yes, sir. Out of bounds. Now, this is the model of the proposed Valhalla estate, with the gambling casino, the convention center, the shopping and cinema complex. Isn't that rough and things, I wouldn't be surprised. They all end up... Direct by monorail, the Gold Coast Airport in this direction, and Brisbane in this direction. Well, he got it. over here, <laughs> we have the layout... Good to see you're a convert to the cause, Michael. Welcome aboard. This came here for the food. <laughs> Lose more likely. I beg your pardon. Hey, don't make a fool of yourself. Start singing Advance Australia Fair or anything. And this is the RDU, the Rhubarb Development Unit. Will this be nationalised? Well, uh, Excuse me, is your name Brandy Alexander? No, she'll be in later on the stage show. Oh, well, can I see her backstage? Well, I'm, part, I'm part of the family. It's see? any minute now. No, that, it's just that... about the security precautions, but I'm sure you understand. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I have great pride and pleasure in introducing our local state member and the most acute and independent mind in any parliament anywhere in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Ted Godfrey, VC. Here, in this most prosperous region of Australia, we pay more taxes for less in return than anywhere else in the so-called Commonwealth to subsidize the ditch diggers of Whoop Whoop, the dull bludgers of Blacktown, the sheep farms of the Western Districts, and the tea-sipping, time-wasting, blood-sucking bureaucrats everywhere. We are expecting, in return for the extra money we give to the South and the West and the North and the United Nations and the starving millions to make do with less, to be thankful to them for what we have built up ourselves out of swamp and sand and rainforest with the sweat of our brow and the work and savings and experience of a lifetime. Independence, therefore, independence for the Gold Coast State from Queensland, and if need be, from Australia, would be only an act of simple common sense to reduce our taxes, increase our incomes, enrich our lives with art and industry and commerce, and glorify our region. This blessed spot, this golden coast, this paradise,
where are we going? Wherever you like. I think we should talk. Your place. No, I can't take you there. Why? Because of your wife? My landlady. We've got this understanding. It would be nice to have someone. Yeah, it would be. Kathy. Don't call me Kathy. Kathy's not a nice girl. Kathy hates her father. My name's Brandy. Yeah, I know. You know a lot. Not enough. Charlie's, let's have a milkshake. Stop here. Kathy, wait! Oh, Christ. Kathy? She was really in love with Bobby Kennedy. And then one night, he didn't call. So she killed herself. She needed to be loved so much. There's lots of ways of killing yourself. What flavoured milkshake was right? I'd like to make love now. Take me somewhere. Romantic. And we'll make love. I'm an old-fashioned girl, you know. Have you... Have you got everything you need? It's all right. I'm sterile. Yeah, yeah. Will you be having breakfast? Yes, yeah, sir. Mmm, I love breakfast. Will you have to come down and get it? It's too late for room service. All right? Thank you. Don't I know you from somewhere? Yeah, and I know you from an old song. Well, I'll take you home again. Kathleen, <laughs> come on. <laughs> My name isn't Kathy. Old Brandy. <laughs> Whatever you prefer. You just keep drinking water. Why? Just do as I say. Come on. <laughs> Yes. I like dolphins. Mm -hmm. They're not fish, you know. They're mammals like us. Yeah. They breathe the same way. This guy once knew told me that. He works with dolphins. One day we were out fishing and we caught a baby dolphin and he said, when they get scared, they just stop breathing until you put them back in the water. And I didn't believe him. So he left him there in the bottom of the boat and he did stop breathing. I thought he'd start again. I waited, but he just lay there completely still. And at last I screamed, put him back, put him back. But it was too late. He was dead. I'm scared. Love me to sleep. I'm not wearing any underwear. I never do. Like Marilyn Monroe. I think we both should sleep tomorrow. I'll take you home. I can't sleep. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I don't have the strength to face the day anymore. I know what you mean. My name's not Brandy. It's Sherry. Is it? Tell me a story. The sun was shining on the sea. Shining with all its might. He did his very best to make the billows clean and bright. That was very strange because, you see, it was the middle of the night. The walrus and the carpenter came down to lend a hand. They've been on the piss since June the 23rd. They wept like bloody drains. Such quantities of sand. Good night, little Alice. Good night. 
cold char, that's it. Like a good Christian boy. That's right, Your Honor. I never touched her all night. You must be demented, my boy. Twenty years. Greedy's daughter. Who? Approximate time of death between 1.15 and 2.15 a.m. Overdose. Self-administered? I presume so. The landlady said she heard screaming. It was 3.15. It was a man screaming. Was it? Do you remember anything about that? Oh. Well, lately I've been getting these blackouts. I'd do something about that if I were you. Here's my card. Thank you. I didn't think she had anything with her. Go home, Mr. Stacy. No one will know you've been here. Why? Why not? Well, do you want them to? Well, no, but I, I got to see Liz. Liz McCready. That's all taken care of. Go home.
just done a lot of talking, Mike, to get you out of a lot of trouble. And I'm bugged if I know why I did it. What the but Jesus got into you? Les, look, I, I... You're off the case. Keep the money. I'll find Cathy some other way. Cathy's dead. It wasn't her. I saw the body. Jesus, pull yourself together, Mike. I mean, look at you. I don't want the money. I think you need it now. I want you to explain to me the condition of this room. I want to know what's going on. How nice to see you, Mrs. Gordon. Here's 25 weeks rent in advance. But I regret to announce that this means our affair is off. Mrs. Gordon was right. The room was untidy. Unsuitable lodgings for an OBE. There was a lot of dirty water on my chest that I had to get off before I felt myself again. I passed by two whole pubs and didn't go in. I began to feel virtuous. It was a new experience. I was determined to find Kathy McCready for my own satisfaction, whatever Les had said. What did he mean, anyhow? I was off the case. I went up the long stairs to get Con Candace's photos. The photos of the real Cathy McCready, the one who was still alive. Or was she? I didn't exactly feel like a million dollars. I hoped I wouldn't disgrace myself by drinking his developing fluid. Did you get the number of the truck? What truck? The one that hit you. That is a very old joke. I'm an immigrant. I'm still catching up. What is it? Is it the police? It's my pusher. A good man. Go back to bed. Oh, that's all right, then. Bed. What a great idea. Bed. Never looked that good on me. This is true. It's very true. Uh, Candopolis, I, uh, <coughs> I owe you $120. This is true. Plus the $5.50 for the coitus interruptus. Make it an even 10. My oh, crikey, she's lovely, this one. Used to know her as a little girl, you know. And Shirley Temple ringlets. She's a natural blonde. Mm. Hang on, what's this? <laughs> Double brandy. She came back. Double brandy? Yeah, that's right. She came back with the other one. We did some sister shots. What do you mean, double brandy? Well, that's what they called it. Couldn't tell them apart. They worked the same shift on different nights under the same name. Brandy Alexander. And some nights they were double brandy. $500 a night. Are you sure you're an inspector of police, Inspector? Sure as I had acne when I was 12. Where is she? Yeah, well, she did work here once. Yeah, I know. Brandy Alexander. Oh, well, we specialize in combinations gin and tonic, scotch and dry. Double brandy? Yeah, well, your double brandy's on the rocks. The other girl's dead. What do you mean she's dead? Overdose. Where's Kathleen McCready? She's dead. What? Sherry's gone. Oh my God, what's the point? I mean, what's the point of it all? Oh, she went away with a client. A big wheel. Sherry? No. Kathy, Kathy McCready. Who was he? Oh, some uh, government minister, I think. Bill Todd, minister for something or other. He's in Colorado. No, he came back. He uh, went all religious. He's up in the mountains with some kids. Yeah, some place, new place, um, new Eden, yeah, near Conungra. Bill Todd. Yeah. Sherry wasn't a real name, you know. Yeah, I know. You ought to get some steak for that eye. Uh, yeah. I drove on up one-handed and horses towards Mount Tambourine. Gliding smoothly along in my bright pink mixmaster past hectare on hectare of green and happy retirement of dentists and abortionists, coke pushers and property developers. 
into what the guidebooks tell us is the largest rhubarb breeding region in the country. A country politically famous for its rhubarb. A country I used to be proud of. Nothing much had happened up here in the Lamington Plateau since a passenger plane went down in 1937. And a survivor walking back for help fell over a scenic waterfall and broke his neck. And the army, judging the scenery good enough to blow up, moved in and built Canungra. Bill Todd and I were there in 1948, boning up for the Third World War that never came. Before wars changed into something less, into hijackings and kidnappings and letter bombs. There are no good guys anymore. We were the good guys in Malaya, Bill Todd and I, a war we won by keeping the newsreel cameramen out of the burning villages at gunpoint and exterminating everyone very quietly like British gentlemen. Excuse me, where can I find Todd? He's over there. Can I go over? Sure, go placidly. Well, I'll try. You are the most intricate structure in the universe. Unique, absolutely unique. And no other structure, no man-made structure. Church, army, parliamentary democracy, multinational consortium, drug ring, league of nations, can ever change or order what is in you. I'm not that good at words. No, no, go on. Oh, yeah. Machine guns I'm good at. Atomic reactors, germ warfare, and all that satanic machinery of repression I've put behind me. But until you can cast off everything that seeks to mould and abort all that is in you, can you ever hope to find that reasonable set of breakable rules to live by. So cast it off. Everything. Remember, no one is like you. It's, um, I don't know. To thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. I know Shakespeare, but that's half of what I mean. That's really good. We've never heard that before. Or as Blake put it in another way. There was a young man from Belgrave who kept a dead whore in his cave. He said, I'll admit I'm a bit of a shit, but thinking the money I'll save. Michael Francis Xavier Stacy, OBE. Indeed. God bless the British Army. Indeed. Up the mighty south. Boy. Up them all the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is Michael Stacy, an old friend. Huh. Old friends are the necessary heretics. We'll keep a good man humble. We were in the army together, the fighting fifth. That's right. Let's call him the old hot toddy. Hot, strong, reliable. Put you to sleep in 30 seconds flat. <laughs> I went with Toddy round his little green kingdom, paid for, he told me, by the wages of wickedness in Colorado and a certain proportion of his family estate. It looked like it had been glued together out of old comic strips of Snuggle Pot and Cuddle Pie or Blinky Bill, the lovable koala. Toddy was a bit like Blinky Bill, quickly able at any time to form a sincere and lasting and cuddlesome relationship with the highest bidder. But what was his relationship with Kathy McCready, apart from the obvious one? What was he really up to? It wasn't religion, I knew that. Or did I? We're trying to live as far as possible with natural foodstuffs and what we know about vitamins. What a good idea. To live as far as possible without drugs and preservatives, and without insecticides, and without electric light. What have you got against electric light? We think the night should come down, the way it does in Asia. Uh, the deep night. This is an experiment with rhubarb. We're trying to find a substitute for oil. Hopefully, there'll be a, an inflammable derivative. Till then, uh, we're trying to live as far as possible without oil. What have you got against oil? It's caused the world far too much trouble than it's worth. Too many wars, too much pollution. The air as well as the water. Simple as that, huh? No, it's not, Stace. We're in search of a reasonable future for the world. The world that survives. Survives what? The Holocaust. He scared me. This was the boy I knew all right, but it wasn't the man. All his maturity had gone missing. What had they done to him back there in Colorado? You ever hear from Quiney? No. 
We wrote letters for a few years, but he kept on talking about how it was our duty to change the face of Southeast Asia. It's hard to answer letters like that. I played chess with him by postcard. Beat him once. Must have had malaria. Life's too short for chess or politics or the army or any of that. Bloody hell, Stace, we're getting on. It's time we sorted out what's important. Still playing Brutus, aren't you? Like you did at Southport High. Been playing it all your life. What are you here for, Stacy? Of what are you in quest? Les McCready's daughter, Kathy, also known as Brandy Alexander. Oh, is that all? It's easy. I'll take you to her. Up this way. What'd you think I was here for? Money, probably, knowing you of old. I've heard you down on your luck, you are, aren't you? Kathy, this is Mike Stacy, an old friend. Hello. Have an apple. The woman tempted me. That sounds entirely possible. Night, you see, the deep Asian night, it should fall. Well, it does. Remember what Quiney used to say when we were in Army Intelligence in Malaya? On those long Asian nights? Yes, that we were the repository of the most dangerous knowledge, technical, biochemical, political in the world. The tree of knowledge of good and evil, take, eat, and conquer. Seems so long ago. It is. In Colorado, I saw more of that. A fluid that rubbed on the palm of the hand would six months later cause internal bleeding, prolonged agony and death. Injections that give you cancer. It is the tree of knowledge we know too much. That's why I started this place in search of the necessary minimums, earth, air, fire, and water. I saw the sun rise in the Grand Canyon and I thought, this level of simplicity must prevail. We need a new tree of knowledge, a new Eden. Excuse me. What do you think of all this? I agree with Bill. About what in particular? That we were born with one family, but our true family might be elsewhere. Is it a long search? Yes. You gonna stay? As long as I want. Oh. I used to visit my father when I was a little girl. Yeah. I remember you. I was happy then. Well, some people can't choose their families anymore, like your father. He chose. Will you come back with me? See him? He loves you, he's sorry. Will you be paid money if I do? Oh, no. Oh. A favor to a friend. What's that, Kanangra? Yeah. Mortify by the sound of it. I don't want. What do you think? Go. Go for a day or two, it'll do you. All right. Do give him my love. Yeah, I will. Are you still with the police? No, I got out. Why did you join them? Needed the money. You brought me a gollywog when I was eight. Did I? I lost it in Israel, Tel Aviv. It was confiscated. I thought it might be a bomb. I cut it open, took out all the stuffing. Poor golly. That was the last time I ever cried.
Oh. I feel sorry for you. Why? You put on the uniform. You did what you were told for all the one life you had on Earth. Well, many types of uniforms, you know, the uniforms of the mind. You just don't understand, do you? No. <laughs> I'm bog Irish ignorant, I guess. Have you ever felt that your childhood happened to somebody else? Well, I uh, worked at two jobs at the age of 14 to keep my two brothers and my four sisters and my mum. If there was a childhood back there somewhere, it certainly didn't happen to me. Is there anything you want to ask me? Anything at all? No. Good night, Uncle Mark. Thank you for the golly walk. I drove off into the dark through the smell of frangipanis and old swamp water and felt righteous and in need of a drink. I discharged my godfatherly duty and wondered what there was left to do in life. Maybe Kathy was right. Maybe some of us do miss out on the Garden of Eden and in despair or grief wear school uniforms and other uniforms into our graves. Some of us are born in paradise and think it's overrated. Watch it gone off the army. Times change. I thought about the good night I had narrowly missed and about the police and the army and Cathy's life and mine and wondered if any time was left in my life to find a family of my own. I thought of going to early mass and then asked who was I kidding and drove my alcoholic withdrawal symptoms home and found that I was expected. Samari! Hey, you old mutt! <laughs> Where the hell do you come from? Huh? It turned out the jock had not only rejected my book, but also sent back my big useless dog. But it was good again to walk down a beach alongside my best and only friend and contemplate my declining years on a policeman's pension. They were hard years coming, I knew. I was 54 and a half with a liver twice that age, with most of the bad news yet to come. You all right, son? Samari, get out of it. Get out of it. Here. So will I, son. Gee, thanks. So will I. said to be entirely popular until one is quite dead. Now, Les was dead, the entire Labour Party and all his enemies in the army bureaucracy wanted to be his closest friend again. Death brings out the best and sweetest in those who survive, sometimes for minutes on end. Greetings, Michael. Ill met. Good speech, Ted. At least I could do. He was a good man. Roland Alvarez. Could have been a great uh, man. Excuse me, could I ask you a question? Never today? had his chance. Piss off. This is a bloody funeral, man, not a Vasquez picnic. Did the senator have any history of heart trouble, Doctor? No, but it happens. Was there any additional pressure in the last few months? Look, this is not the time nor the place. The interesting thing, of course, is that you might be appointed, Sir Ted. I might be. You'll have to ask the Premier, won't you? I heard it could be his wife. Oh, really? Well, good luck to it. About time she started earning her money in the daytime. Mrs. 
Mr. McCree, could you comment on the possibility that you might be appointed to fill the Senate vacancy? Oh, sure. Show a little respect, eh? Mrs. McCready's in no condition to talk. There'll be a press conference on Friday. I'll answer all your questions. Stand aside, Paige. Let the lady through. Please. Hi there, Stace. Curly, I think I should tell you, you got bad breath. You all right? Yes. I couldn't go in. I've been out here remembering. I think you should have come in. What's the point? Death doesn't matter. It's just changing our form. Our body's just what we live in. Did anything happen when you went in to see him? No. <laughs> I felt I should have come in with you. Yes, we had a talk. He was a human being. He was frightened for me. He loved me. He really did. They killed him. What? They killed him. I think we should have a talk. Huh? My car's down. Your mail, Mr. Stacy. Thank you. Here's this one. I turned to her in desperation when you rejected me. Oh, pull the other one. It's got bells on. Mm -hmm. Who you play chess with? An old army friend. Tell me. Can I trust you? I bought you golly walk, didn't I? I've grown up a lot since then. Yeah. At first I was just doing things to make him angry. I got expelled from school for having two boys in my room and all that. Two? That shows enterprise. I'd spend all night at discos in the sand hills and he'd call the police. Yeah, I heard. I tried some drugs. I didn't like drugs. Tell me what happened. I met this nice guy at a party over the border. I liked him. I liked him in bed. And I stole one of Dad's paintings and we lived on the money in his flat. He's dead now. Yes, yes, I know. <clears throat> I was there. An old friend of mine shot him. An old friend I used to do duets with at policemen's balls. While we were making love, he'd tell me things to make it more exciting. Things I didn't believe. What sort of things? An army coup. What? An army coup. A takeover with army troops and tanks. He said he was a secret agent. And then I went to other people and worked on them. Eagle was the first, and then there were others, including a couple of generals. And it was true. Daddy was going to be part of it. Then why did they kill him? Because he got scared. Well, that's why he hired you to find me, so that when he told them he was pulling out, they wouldn't have me to threaten him with. He was going to fly me out of the country. Well, why didn't he? He died the same night. Oh, I like it. I like it. It'd make a good high school composition. If you ever got back to high school. Who are you looking at? No one. How did they kill your father? Something they wrapped on his arm or, or whatever. It can be done. Why would they want to take over the Gold Coast? Pay less taxes? Well, that too, but mainly because of the oil. It's the biggest deposit this side of the Persian Gulf. Oil's very important now. It's worth killing a few rich old Australians for. Maybe I'd believe you if I had a drink. I need a drink. Let's make love. No. Why not? I am your godfather. Lapsed godfather. Tell me, why did your dad want to pull out? He didn't want the beaches getting dirty. They're lovely beaches. Yeah. Who are they? Oh, an old mate of mine, Curly, and his smart young assistant, Bluey. Wonder if they got the room bugged. Are they going to kill us? Maybe they're going to kill me. Wonder why they haven't done so already. Come on, I'll give you a leg over the back fence. There's a lane way over the back. Meet me in half an hour at the Gelato Palace. If I don't turn up, don't call the police. You might get curly. I hope I see you. Brush off, is it? No. 
Why did you join Buttons and Bones? I needed the money. I spent it all on a motorbike. Take care. Mr. Stacy, Samara's just made a mess all over my washing. Well, he's a young dog, Mrs. Gordon. He's still learning. Come on, come on, Samari. Come on. Send me old China. Don't call me your old China. Or out me old Taiwan, me old Hong Kong. I've been on the phone to a hitman. Ben O'Reilly, remember Ben? I asked how much it'd cost to have you rubbed out. You know, it's only $800. Think of that. I mean, your friends could pass the hat around, couldn't they? Anyway, I phoned my publisher. What are you doing? <laughs> Incidentally, has a photo stat of what you burn, all except the last three pages. If I suffer a fatal accident, then so do you. He's got 800 to spare, you see. You're a fatter target than you used to be. You're bluffing. Only one way to find out, old mate. You don't know who you're up against, Stace. They gotta be pretty dumb to hire you, Curly. Anyway, see you in church. Your funeral or mine. What do we do now? Get out the spare tire. Something about the smell of Curly brings out the beast in me and Samari. And I wondered which of us would kill the other if certain American interests didn't go as first. I drove past a green and clear Pacific not yet choked and corrupted with oil. And thought about things in general, like the Arabs and the Americans and the profit motive and CIA-backed revolutions and how close they were getting to my hometown. I thought about Les McCready and his daughter, too, and wondered how I would keep her alive. It wasn't going to be easy. There were a billion reasons, I guessed, all of them petrodollars, why neither of us would outlive our next gelato. You slept with all those men merely to <laughs> further your investigation? It's a way of making people talk. It can be done. It's a bit yucky, but it can be done. She was all any old fool could ask for, a beautiful teenage masochist with an electro complex and all the hope in the world. She knew her life was a great predestined adventure, and if it ended like Bonnie and Clyde, so be it. It was girls like this old fools like Agamemnon died for. Mr. Stacy, yeah? There's no friend who wants to see you. Oh, yeah? Wait here. Over here. I'll let you in on something. Your remaining night's in big trouble. Quiny! How are you, Digger? What are you doing here? Oh, we're doing a combined Malaysian-Australian Army exercise at Kanungra. Just showing my lads the local wonders. How'd you know I was here? Well, I saw you drive up. She's a bit young, isn't she? She's old enough. <laughs> What's Jean think about all this? Not with Jean anymore. Oh, that's a pity. You didn't say so in the postcards. No, we only played chess, didn't we? Have a beer. Thanks. Want to tell me about it? Oh, we tried to have kids all those years, then we gave up. Then she got pregnant by another man. That's bad luck. It shouldn't have made any difference, but it did. And she miscarried, and that made a lot of difference. Oh, and I got on the piss on. Quiney. Yes, all that. If I was to tell you that this army exercise might be more than an army exercise, and I knew where it was. I'd, uh... Listen with great attention to what you thought it was. And if I was to tell you that the Prime Minister might be prevailed upon by certain people in the know to uh, call it off... I'd listen with great attention to the names of the people who might prevail on the Prime Minister. Now, don't play chess with me, Richard. I give you my word as an officer and a gentleman, which you know I am, that if what you say were happening, and I were in it, I'd invite you to join it. And I'd say no. Would you? Yep. Well, I don't know anything about it, says truly. 
You could have been misinformed or looking on the wine when it was methylated. Could you inquire? Bloody oath. If I'm going to be put up against the wall this weekend, I want to know the reasons. I'll tell you what. Why don't we rendezvous at 0600 hours tomorrow? At the chessboard on the beach, we'll have a game and a bit of a chat. Okay. Oh, this is Lieutenant Colonel Kim Long Sam, my assistant. This is Mike Stacy, my best pupil. Hey, old China. How do you do? This is a lovely country. Yeah, it is. Very like the east coast of Africa. Hmm. More so by the minute. It was clear to me then, as I took the back road round, that I was going to be asked to be part of this political takeover nonsense, if Quiney was part of it, and I knew he was. Or maybe Quiney was up to something else. Then I remembered how Bill Todd, Quiney and I used to sit on this cane veranda in Long Pock between patrols, and drink choda paint, and ask endlessly as the night fell and the stars came out, what if? What the? <laughs> Yeah. Is that deliberate? I don't know. I think you should leave the Gold Coast. Should I? Yeah, fly south, yeah. Uh, on the noon flight tomorrow to Sydney. You can stay with my sister. Sounds thrilling. Do you want me gone? No. You come too? No. Why? Just do what you're told! I'm a stranger here myself. Don't ask me the way. I'm just another face. Someone else's play. It's all true, isn't it? There's no telling wrong. I don't know, I think so. Right. Sounds crazy. Yeah, well, it's not the country it used to be. It never was. You saw it from your khaki tower. I lived there. Yeah. Where are you staying tonight? I don't know. Maybe the morgue? How about my place? May I? Mm -hmm. Do you know I'm making up a list to my mind of all the people I really care about? You're on it. And Samari, of course. Very short list. Blood flow to your brain is being interrupted, and you're blacking out, and it'll get worse. So I should stop drinking, eh? If you want to live. I see. Of course, if you don't, that's another matter. Then I'd uh, recommend Don Perignon, and a room with a view. About three dozen bottles should see you out. You're interested in the way people die, are you? It's of great professional interest to me. How did the girl in the hotel room die, the one you thought was Cathy McCready? Overdose. Who gave it to her? Could have been anyone. Could have been you. Supposing I wanted to give somebody else an overdose, um, heart attack, stroke, I had a lot of money. I'd ask my local police commissioner if I were you. How much would I have to pay? A lot of people die in surface paradise. They come here to die. This is true. I mean, most of them are over 60 already. Yes, indeed. This town's what Australians have instead of an afterlife. Or a life. They come like Christmas beetles crawling down in the wall to die within the smell of the sea. Good town for a doctor, is it? Well, that's the rumor. How much did they pay you to rub out Les McCready? I beg your pardon. And the girl, the one you thought was his daughter. I think the alcohol has affected your brain more than I...
come all right. I think so. Where's Caddy? She's in the shower. Got a whiskey? Yeah. Uh, I mean, no, do doctor's orders. What happened, Stacy? Trouble is, the doctor's dead sort of brings his diagnosis into disrepute. Stacy, what's happening? Are you still your shampoo? Is that all right? Yeah, sure. I'll get some more in the morning. Uh, I got your ticket. The coach leaves at a quarter to 11. Great. Thanks. That's OK. Well, I'm off to bed now. Coming to tuck me in? Why not? She's nice. Yeah, she's a good friend. Did someone try to kill you? Yes. It's really happening, isn't it? Yes. Do you feel out of your depth? To right, do you? No. I'll miss you. I'll miss you too. Are you going to sleep with her? Absolutely. We don't make too much noise. Why not? I'll get jealous. Or jealous of me? Jealous of anybody. Sweet dreams. You too. I like your Uncle Mike. Do you like Samare more than me? Or me more than Samare? It varies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very fond of you, Stacy. And me of you. I heard a phrase. Sexual friends. It's good, isn't it? It says a lot. Mm. You're too good for my taste. What happened to lovers? They saw the light and became sexual friends. Did we do that? Oh, I think so. You know, I would have married you in 1952, way back then. I know. And I wouldn't have married you. You saw the light. Too much light on too many subjects. You learn too much, like the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Eat once and whammo, goodbye paradise. You wake up with a headache in the parking lot outside. Stacy. Mm -hmm. Don't die. I'll try not to. I don't altogether believe that. I've been too close too often not to be a total coward by now. Take care, please. I will. Hold me. Where are you going? Early game of chess. I was dreaming about a young boy in an army uniform and standing in the dark outside a dance hall. The sea pounding and the sand blowing. And waiting for him to kiss me. It was very real. And I woke up to see you beside me. Snoring. You know, time flies. Cake, my love. Yes. Listen, if I don't get back, I'll get back by nine. Take Kathy in my car by the back road to the airport. Make sure she gets the plane, okay? Kiss me, Stacy. This time round. Hello, Stace. Your move. 
I never could get used to army hours. Yeah, best hours there are. The mind's crystal clear. Everything can be foreseen. All I can do is take your bishop and lose my knight. <laughs> you never could see the obvious, could you? Check. Well, what's obvious to the keen mind is often unthinkable to the dull and honest one. Nothing is unthinkable ever. What did you find out about the exercise? Everything you said is true. And you knew about it all along? Yeah, I planned it all. When does it start? Tomorrow at 0600 hours, 23 hours from now. Where does it end? In a better order of things. What a guillotine in Cavill Avenue. And you as Minister for Public Safety. Something like that. And who is Prime Minister, Ted Godfrey? No, someone more pragmatic. Ice, dice. Oh, Christ. We watch you with us, Stace. Tell me the obvious, Kwani. What have I been missing out? The oil offshore, the American money? The oil offshore, the uranium inland, and all the mineral wealth clear through to South Africa. A few more years, we'll be marching west. You're mad. Stark Raven mad. Come with us. Why? It's one of those things we talked about on that veranda. That was just talk on a veranda by young men maddened by choder pegs in youth in another world. Was it? Do I have a choice? Every man always has a choice. At least one choice. Look, I'm up early. I seem to have mishandled a very important chess game. I got a bad liver. I'm a shandy off the horrors on my good days. My old friends are dying off like flies. My wife is on with my lawyer. I'm a tired man. Yes, you are. Join us. We want you for us, old lad. Why don't you two grow up, for God's sake? Things don't happen like this. It takes a hundred years to introduce Sunday drinking. We'll be up in New Eden if you should change your mind. Why did you bullshit me, Toddy? All that ecological, transcendental rhubarb and that William fucking Shakespeare stuff. To an old mate? It wasn't bullshit. I believe most of those things. For those who don't believe it, you put up against a wall. You two are crazy, you know that? Crazy? What if? Oh, Jesus. Go home, Stace. Eat your cornflakes and sleep through the revolution. Will you give me your word that Cathy won't be harmed? And or me? We can't promise. I think we can. Memory of the old days, and other reasons. Okay, thanks. I'll send you a postcard from the People's Republic of North Victoria. <laughs> Come and visit us any time. Write a learned article for the National Times. Forever and forever farewell, Cassius. If we should meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, well, then this parting was well made. Yeah. Ta-da.
got out of your shirt, Mr. Stacy. Thank you, Mrs. Gordon. But I suppose these accidents will happen. Where are you going? To an old boy's reunion. Jesus Christ. I'm going to borrow your vehicle. Why? Mine got blown up. Yours got blown up. You want to borrow mine? Beat you up. A tribe of pint-sized Orientals and an underdressed American What'd with a band around him said, I love your friends. What did you tell them? Nothing, not a thing. What'd they want to know? Where you were. I had the distinct advantage of not <laughs> knowing where you were. <laughs> it's a God's honest truth. <laughs> Here are the keys. I'm going to have a liquid breakfast. Have it back by six. Christ, what's this? I will therefore resign, but only if I have the party's agreement in favour of the one man I consider capable of filling my husband's shoes. In Parliament, in the Cabinet, and in the War Office. A great Australian. Mr. Bill Todd. Uh, Mrs. McCready, may I ask just one more question? Mrs. McCready. That'll be all. Thank you, gentlemen. Bill Todd of known Thank you. Stop the lizards. Pull out the dog! Look out, Trinity! <laughs> One thing you could always depend on was the word of an officer and a gentleman. All those treaties with all those American Indians. All those peasants promised amnesty after the peasants' revolt. I could feel my life coming to its end, but I couldn't work out why. Stacy, turn around, please. Ah. For a long time in the dark, I was the sand in an hourglass over a thousand centuries sliding away. Then I was a Christmas beetle looking up in reverence at roaring grey breakers under three hanging moons. Then I woke. It was a room I'd been in before, but everything was wrong. There were Asians and cables and a device for brewing tea. And Cathy McCready was sitting like stone. I wanted to pull the dark back over me, but everything was still there. And everything was wrong. I felt I needed a drink, a long final magnum of Don Perignon, and a long cool sleep till Judgment Day. I didn't get the brand I wanted, but I nearly got the rest. Ah, oh, there, police commissioner. What's happening? It's the first day of the new world. The army exercise is about to start. Mrs. McCready and Sir Ted Godfrey are observers. When Sir Ted gives the signal, we shoot him between the eyes. Saves referendums. Something like that. What's happening, Gabby? Why are we still alive? You both have to die of natural causes. Much tidier that way. Twenty years, I'll save you in trouble. We can't wait that long, I'm afraid. I've been offering you a drink for a long time. Over it! Now you're gonna have it. Chagalag.
Asia, I'm not Asia. I'm army intelligence. Jesus Christ, for Leary. She's Asia. Oh, oh. very good in bed. Thanks. Hey, I wonder what she tells me. That's a question. I looked up and behold, the Garden of Eden was in big trouble. Word had got out that happiness was getting popular. The army moved in. The way the army always moves in on everything, without exception. Join the army and visit the pearly gates. I was sorry to see the rhubarb go. Something about it reminded me of human potential. and Quiney's influence with the Australian army seemed to be diminishing fast. Quiney, speak to me! King James Queen, tell me! Everything under control here, Major? Yes, sir. Major? Not too many casualties. Mm -hmm. Most of them Asian. Oh, well, they're expendable. Well, uh, call it an explosion in an ammunition dump. Well done, my lad. Take a week's leave. Go lie on the beach somewhere for a while. Thank you, sir. Morning, Ted. Oh. Drunk again, Michael? Absolutely. Now, the Chinaman's bus. How am I going to tell him? You want a lift? Hi there, Cobber. What's he doing? Moonlighting in a second job. Don't be silly. He's one of us. Oh. It's all right, then. So you knew about it all along? Of course I did. So what happened? Certain American interests got wind of the oil offshore and organized with certain Asian and Australian army officers a coup along traditional lines. But they made the mistake of inviting me in. And I got to work on the army officers and organized a little counter coup, which you saw today. <laughs> Was it Joe? Yeah, only a few uh, Asians dead, expendable. And uh, Lonely Buffalo, and Madame McCready, and a few other Wobblies. Part of the exercise, you see, was to flush out the Wobblies. Like Les McCready? Yes, Les was decidedly Wobbly. And Bill Todd, playing the bleeding heart Hamlet for the last. <laughs> Have a KH3 pill. What is it? Super vitamin. Keeps you young. Look at me. 
Yeah. <coughs> and who dealt with Les? They did. David Welsh. The doctor at the table the night you sang Bye Bye Blackbird. And then we dealt with him from a great height. Dangerous little bastard. Shake hands with him, you cough yourself to death. I thought you were shooting at me. Mm -hmm. okay. Mustn't get tickets on yourself, Michael. No, you weren't at all dangerous. And furthermore, you were working on our side. What? Mm. And you actually got to Kathy McCready, which we couldn't do, and grilled her very efficiently. How do you know? Where's your room, Buck? Little port? Uh, yeah. And your preposterous little car? And your banana? My banana? But... See? Looks like a freckle. When Curly and his mates were working you over, it was the only soft thing you had in your pocket. What are you, Ted? You're not just some uh, laps, trades hall, numbers man with a controversial knighthood, are you? I'm the secret head of Northern Operations for Army Intelligence. A job you might have had if you'd stayed in the service. And stayed off the booze. Can I have a cigar there, boss? Mm, of course, Curly, of course. Cuban. Thank God relations with the communists have eased. Baldus has been in confidence, of course. Now I can trust your basic common sense. Now you're off the turps, that is. Oh, yeah, yeah, too right. Mm. And Stace. Yes, Ted. I'd revise a few things in your manuscript if I were you. Chapter 15, you mean? If you think that one's a bit uh, superfluous. And chapter 12, paragraphs 8 and 9. <laughs> Yeah, why not? Just for old time's sake. That's it. Yes. For old time's sake. Yeah. Here, good enough for you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is this is good enough. Pip, pip, old man, keep the flag flying. That was a good flag in its day. On to Gamora. for you. Plan B. <laughs> We're not going to bus. Chop, chop, ladies. The night is young. <laughs> I bought a gollywog for Kathy, as I had 12 years before, and waited calmly among young people, being gentle with one another in the dark. Looking at them and thinking what had happened. Certain old men wanting to surround and capture paradise. And what that meant, the strange, bright place Australians went to instead of dying. I realized paradise is youth, and all of us in our middle age and old age try to recapture it in different ways. Like Lonely Buffalo did, and Toddy, and Ted Godfrey, and the lady from Buttons and Bows. And all those other old failures like my good self, with nowhere to go but into the heads of the very young. But the young are tougher than they seem. And they know in the end what's most important, which is to dance in their youth, make love and be adored in their proper season, and believe all manner of things for a time, till the time ends, and they know when it has. It's written in the slow alteration of their cells, and you can't change that however you try. Kathy and I met and talked and parted the way I knew we had to. And she knew too now. And I raised my milkshake to her and wished her good luck. And imagined her naked and kindly to my old age one last time. And took my old bones off into the early dawn. I thought about homes and families and Kate and everything I'd loved and lost and tasted once and been afraid of ever since I was a schoolboy here in this strange town. I wasn't sadder or wiser or perceptively older, but I knew how old I was. 
And that was good too, in its way. Now is the time for all good men to come to the aid of their hometowns. Signing off. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes.